The Selfish Podcast acknowledges the traditional owners of the land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Are you overwhelmed? Stuck in survival mode? Do you need to focus more on self and be selfish? Hey, beautiful people, it's Chloe and Steph, your hosts of The Selfish Podcast. Join us on our introspective journey as we explore alternative healing treatments. We're on a mission to soothe our mind, body and soul. What really works? How can we get it together? And what do we need to thrive? Through deep conversations and personal experiences, we tackle everything from face mapping to breath work and more. It's time to prioritise yourself and your well-being. Subscribe now and get ready to put yourself first with The Selfish Podcast. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to our next episode of The Selfish Podcast. With Chloe and Steph. With Chloe and Steph. New little Mm add-on. Why did we do that, Steph? Well, just to make us more searchable. I think there are a few <laughs> selfish podcasts out there. So many. Who yeah. would have thought? Who would have thought? We we didn't when we named it. We did. We thought really. we were pretty clever. We didn't do enough research, did <laughs> we? We didn't. So we've just added that on just so when you're, you know, looking at uh, yeah. Podding, Apple you can find or Spotify, us. you can find us. Mm, love that. Exactly. Love it. And you're looking a bit different today. You got a fresh oh, do. Thanks. Yeah. Last week, went to the hairdresser. And went back to my um, natural roots. Went back to your roots. Mm, To the dark side. How does it feel being a brunette again? Well, I don't think I've been a brunette. I was thinking about this since year 10. So that's like nearly 22 (laughs) years ago. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this dark anyway. Well, it looks great. Thank you so much. Do you feel different? Yeah. I bloody scare myself when I look in the mirror. <laughs> no. Do you think people take you more seriously as a brunette versus mm. blonde or you haven't really been in those situations yet? Not yet, but maybe we do have more fun as a I brunette. Think, I do think brunettes have more fun. Steph and I are going out together on the weekend so we can report back next week to let you know if brunettes have more fun. We can definitely report back. <laughs> but as I'm sitting here, I've just realised I wore mm. these T-shirts a bit to bed. I wore it last <laughs> night. I wore it to bed. I'm not even wearing a bra. I still... It's fine. <laughs> no, we, we're really just pulling all the threads together today, aren't we? It's, it's going to sure be are. an interesting one, guys. So just um, put your seatbelts on and come along for the ride. And get your listening ears ready. You love that one, don't I love you? that one. I love that one. No, we've had pathology days. I love it. We've had to um, fit this recording into mm. a lot of other things due to sickness and work commitments and all the rest. My little Raph has it's pretty gross actually. He's got head, foot, and mouth, and um, <laughs> his face is just covered. Oh, so I've just the the boys have had it before, but they've never had the sores. Yeah, and they're really like quite. Yucky. Poor Bubba. I know. He doesn't seem too perturbed. So anyway, he's enjoying the TV. I'm sure he is. Lots of TV time. (laughs) Lots of TV. (laughs) So Steph, did you have a look at the love languages? Yeah, I did. I did. So I did the quiz and I also got you Mm -hmm. to send me through your results, which I was quite shocked. At mine or yours? At mine. At I'm mine. So, so let's, to let's hear yours. yeah, let's go through yours. So, okay. just as a reminder, so we've got words of affirmation, which mm-hmm. are all about you know learning the reason behind the love. Mm-hmm. We've got service, acts of service, which is more around easing the burden for the other person. Mm-hmm. That's how you show your love. We've got touch, which is not just about bedroom touch, but also about you know that little hug, that little pat. Mm. Um, oh, we've got the time, pat. the little pat. <laughs> We've got time, which undivided attention, which I think is very interesting in the age of having our phones everywhere. Mm. And I mean, I've got really bad habits with that, just automatically checking my phone. Um, And then the other one is gift, which isn't necessarily about, you know, the gift. gift. It's not a superficial thing. Mm. It's more around the thoughtfulness behind it. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Okay. Mm. Quite like that. So I was pretty much even on all of them. Oh, wow. So I don't know what that says about me. Either I'm incredibly oh, well-rounded mm-hmm. or like a psychopath. So I got <laughs> gifts, I got 23%, quality time, 20%, touch, 20%, service, 20%, and words of affirmation, 17%, which really surprised me because I was really big on the words and touch. The last wow. time I did this. When do you think you last did it? Oh, maybe like 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. ages ago. And now I'm even Stephen with gift. Mm-hmm. 
coming out on top for me by 3%. Mm, I'll remember that. Mm, but, I mean, I'm all the same. You're all the same. Same, same for all of them, you, really. Yeah, you can do I any can of it. You can, can give me a pat. You can give you a pat. Give me a give, give me a little pat. You can take out the rubbish bin for me, mm. whatever. It's all the, all the mm. same. Whereas you, my friend, mm. so words of affirmation came out top for you. Mm, which is very interesting. But I feel like I do resonate with that. So when yeah. you when Chloe sent me her um, results, mm-hmm. I just originally just did a thumbs up and then I read the results that said words of affirmation and then I wrote back, oh, this is amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> you felt like you had I to was, give well, me more. Yeah, I thought I'll give it oh, to thank you. Thank you for that. So you're 30%, acts of service 27%. Mm. So they're pretty equal as your top two. Yes. And then we've got physical touch as 20%, receiving gifts 17% and mm. quality time 7%. Whoa. So I just prefer my own time. Well, yeah, I think it just if you're if someone's showing you love, you prefer the words, <laughs> the words and the service. <laughs> I don't want to be with anybody. Nah, nah. nah, I don't want the time. Just give me the give just me the give words. Give me the words. Give me the words mm. and do something for me while you're giving me the words. Mm. And then just chuck a gift in there, maybe too. Maybe yeah, chuck a gift in there every so often. Yeah, a bit of a pat. Bit of a pat. Then... Oh yeah, pats were for before gifts, weren't they? Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 By yeah. 3%. I do like a hug. I'm. I'm a hug girl. Yeah. I'm one of those girls that gives like quite firm hugs. Mm, and okay. I think it. I think it maybe some people don't like that. <laughs> but I'm like, if I'm going to give a hug, I'm going to give a good one. Yeah. And where do you go firm? Like, do you go firm with your with your boobs, squeeze? or do you go firm? Oh. Like, which which part of the body do you squeeze into? Oh, I've never thought about like squeezing from my boobs. That's weird. <laughs> now I'm going to think about that. Um, no, I think I'm just like, you know, a big like bear hug. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't really think of it as necessarily a like sexual. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't, (laughs) I didn't mean it like that. I was just thinking, so if you're hugging someone, like, are you like, is it just all of your body going to them at the same time? Or is it, are you like, you know how some people like lean forwards? Hmm. I don't think I like thrust towards (laughs) them. (laughs) <laughs> Not a hip thruster. Nah. nah okay. I reckon. Maybe Just a more pretty, top, yeah. top, top heavy, yeah. maybe. Because I... What do you do? Well, I noticed that when I was breastfeeding and my boobs like went oh, up, I, yeah. I started doing boob hugs. Un, mm. Like, didn't mean to. But like really pushing my boobs into people, but okay. I don't do that anymore. Like it was just because it had <laughs> a bit of a change. <laughs> do you a bit of change of like, situation. Ooh. Well, yeah. Well, really? my, you felt that. I think they liked it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, I just don't hug anyone anymore. No, you just <laughs> no like one. a little like, side kiss. Are we allowed to do that though in COVID? No. <laughs> I just pat them on the back. Just give them a little pat. That's give right. A little pat. bit of touch. Give a little pat. <laughs> so I've got a follow-up tap. from um last uh, mm-hmm. last episode mm-hmm. about this lotto ticket. So oh, yeah. I had bought a ticket in Powerball, which I didn't yes. win, and then I bought a ticket in the other lottery. I bought mm-hmm. like this super long ticket. It was like... You know, quite expensive, but I was Lots of paper. quite sure Portraits. that I would be winning. So I was okay with the cost. Okay. Um, so I said to Hugh, after I was actually listening back to our recording mm-hmm. last week when I was doing some editing, and I was like, oh, I completely forgot about that lotto ticket. So I said to Hugh, oh, where's that lotto ticket that was drawn on Saturday? And yeah. he's like, what do you mean? The one I threw in the bin. <gasps> the one he threw in the bin. So... It was, yeah, it was last Monday, I think, just before the bins went out. I was completely unhinged. About the ticket? About the ticket, because in my mind I had won. So I went straight to the bin. I said, when did you throw it out? Is it in the nappy bin? Is it in the apple, the the normal bin? Like, where is this? I went through the bin in the kitchen. Then I ran downstairs, like ran downstairs so fast Mm -hmm. to our outside bin I got the recycling bin because Hugh, I was like, well, he could have put it in the recycling bin or he could not have. I threw the recycling bin onto the ground so Mm -hmm. all of the contents would come out of it. Like a mad woman going through it all. Then I went to the garbage bins and without any, like just... Tipped them out? Didn't tip them out now because I didn't want to have to then pick it all up. But Mm. I... Without any gloves on, just started going Rummaging. through them like a wild animal, mm-hmm. 
couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Hugh got back. He was like, I'm so, so sorry. And I'm like, I know this is irrational, but I was really thinking we were going to win. So I went through the is nappy bin. not another way to check? Surely well, in this no, day and age. no, because I don't have these membership cards. So I just, but I wish... I'd had a photo of, mm-hmm. well, I don't actually wish I had a photo of myself, but it was actually quite a, quite a scene. And I went through Sounds all of the like bins. It. I went through the nappy bins. <laughs> Couldn't find a, Huey was like, it's all good, Steph. I'll, I'll have a look in the morning. Lo and behold, he got his gloves out, looked in the morning yes. and found the ticket. And? I won $26. <laughs> Okay, hang on. Worth it. You won twenty six or one dollar twenty six? No, I I I won twenty six dollars, but the cost of the ticket was like sixty four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things we sometimes have to do. I so, wasn't. Yeah. What ensued after that between you and Hugh? Oh, well, Hugh was very apologetic. Oh, was he? He was Did really he laugh? apologetic. He laughed a bit. At my reaction, hmm. but then he supported me, so I did oh, the. And he felt him. he felt quite bad because I said, "I know this is irrational, yeah, but it's not because in my mind, that's You're that million. ticket's worth thirty million dollars, which it wasn't. <sighs> it was worth time? minus forty dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, note to self. So I haven't che- I haven't cashed it in yet because it had to go through a drying and cleaning <laughs> process because <laughs> Hugh had folded it up and it was in with the coffee grinds. And okay. let's just say it's it's got a bit of patina to it these days. Mm. So I'll okay. take it. Yeah, I'll take it into. What are you the... going to do with your twenty six bucks? I don't know. In this economy, mm, not much. buy some eggs, <laughs> something like that. So anyway, yeah, I, I just like needed to, to tell you that because sometimes we. I like the follow up. You know, we've got to do these things. Yeah, you weren't giving up. No, I wasn't no. giving up. No, you I were was climbing not that mountain. Up. Like Miley Cyrus. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do we got next? What are we talking about today? Well, I would love to hear more about human design today. Oh, yeah. I could do that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Do we want to do a card pull first? Yes. Let's do it. So we're going to pull our card today, and it's from the Herbal Astrology Oracle gu- Guidebook by Adriana Ailes. Okay. So what is our... Okay, we have Ooh, Milk Thistle. Number 23. Number 23, the Peaceful Warrior. Oh, beautiful. And I pulled that up right. Okay, so we've got Peaceful Warrior, Shield, Truth Keeper, Shelter, Sanctuary, Safekeeping and Justice. Hmm. Native to the Mediterranean, the Greek physician and botanist was the first to write down Milk Thistle's healing properties in the first century. Mm. Guidance. <laughs> this is really deep. Yeah, go straight to the guidance. Okay. <laughs> Milk thistle dispels the damaging and destructive thoughts that can induce that can induce an endless loop of self sabotage. Oh. Abandon insecurity, gossip, and fear based protection strategies that enable frustration or false sense of growth. Do not waste your time trying to control what cannot be controlled. Like a peaceful warrior, set your boundaries firmly and fearlessly. Like badger, milk thistle shakes up the systems that hinder innovation and halts patterns and behaviours that stunt growth. No, that what you are not changing, you are choosing. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. What you are not changing, you, you are, are choosing. Ch- That's pretty powerful. It's really powerful. Yeah. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, me too. Me too. We talk, That sort of links back to that livestock take we talked about mm, a few episodes yes, ago. Yes, absolutely. Mm. What you are not changing, you are choosing. Mm. We'll pop that mm, in Thank you. I'm thank wondering you, if that might go into our beautiful month of July a little bit as well. Um, our keywords for J- July are introspection, detox and passion. So this is a month to reflect. What do you turn to when you wish to escape? This is not the season to people please. How afraid are you to honour your true desires at the risk of cutting off connection? Hmm. 
So July's affirmation is, is I speak my truth and let go of all that no longer serves my authentic self. Mm. And it does, it talks about balance, um, healthy boundaries, maybe detoxing your social media accounts, <laughs> um, donating. Well, you've just been um, locked out of yours, haven't you? I oh, know. <laughs> 24 hours, I couldn't do anything. Self-imposed detox. It was Wouldn't, great. Sorry, it not, was actually yeah. really good. Yeah. I was kind of like, I don't really care if it doesn't come back. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, time for organising your clothes, donating things that you no longer need or use. Yeah, review your energy exchanges. Beautiful. Mm. Great, isn't it? Beautiful. All right, beautiful people. Thanks for that. Well, let's, um, let's go into today's mm. topic, which is... Human design. Mm. I'm really excited to dive into oh, this I video. I cannot wait to hear. I dived into human design back when Raf was born. So five years ago, I started looking into it. I don't even know how I came about it. I think on Instagram, something just popped up and took my fancy. And um, I have now completed a course in it with a beautiful um, woman from the States, Erin Claire Jones, and just like love how it's made me feel more seen and understood, mm. more understand myself. Not that I've really shared it with many others at this point in time. So basically it's a system that helps us to understand how we're uniquely wired and um, it really speaks to how we can use our energy um, to find our own unique flow um, and enable us to thrive. Um, so basically human design is a system that allows us to understand ourselves on a deeper level and it supports us to work with our energy and find our flow and to thrive um, in the best way possible. So it's based on, like astrology, it's based on our time mm -hmm. of birth our place of birth um, and date, obviously. And um, we're each uniquely wired to thrive in different ways in all areas of our life. So it talks to, it doesn't just speak to, say, career. You can use it throughout all areas of your life, like relationships, um, career, general living, um, yeah, how you make decisions. It, got, it goes into so much depth. And it was... Um, Bought about. How's this going? You're good. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, keep going. What do I look bored? A little bit. No, no. I was just looking at the. I was looking at the the recording <laughs> oh stuff. Oh my god, I'm feeling. Like... I was just looking at the recording <coughs> stuff. Mm. I was looking at this. That's what I was just making um, sure it was um, doing stuff. Okay, great. No, I'm very interested. <laughs> uh, do you want to ask any more questions, or you just want me to keep talking? No, I've got a question. So, a lot of these things are based on when we're born. Mm. And there's a lot of cesareans. I always think, well, what about, you know, Freddie was born via C-section. Mm -hmm. How does that, does that have any difference with the timing? Or at the end of the day, it's his time is, yeah, the, when his, he was born is his, his time. Yeah, soul's still chosen to come that way. You yeah, know, okay. There's always a reason as to why a section occurs, I think, in my mind. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't, no. No. So say if a baby is, their due date is the 14th of July, but they come on the 8th of July, mm -hmm. then that is when yep. I, be, I think that's that's their date of birth. That's yeah. when they've decided to well, come it is, to the Well, yeah, it is their date of birth. It is, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the date that we go off of. Speaking of dates of birth, it's my birthday on the weekend. <gasps> Happy birthday, Thanks. Dad. Cancerian. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so talk to me. So I've done heaps of these different personality quizzes before. It's not really a personality quiz, though, is it? It's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. I would put it on the same level as like astrology. So for me, it just, it shows us a blueprint, a blueprint of um, how we are all uniquely wired to thrive by using our unique energies. Okay. And before you go into the different types, mm -hmm. just a question on, would you then use this with other things like the Maya Briggs or... How does it mm. differ to some of those, or the DISC profiles, or, mm -hmm. you know, what Hogwarts mm -hmm. house you're in, or mm -hmm. which Sex in the City character mm. you are? Yeah, that was interesting. The latter are more my, my style. But do you use it in conjunction, like, with your, with your star signs and all of that kind of stuff? 
Yeah, I fit. I think it fits really nicely with star signs. Mm. Um, I feel like this is more. I feel like star signs or astrology can be like. It definitely tells you about your own characteristics for sure. Um, and it also gives you kind of a bit of a roadmap though, you know, for your life and how your life's path or journey may unfold. Okay. Whereas I feel like this one, yes, probably speaks more to your your personality or your characteristics or more specifically though, it got, dives into like how you best use your energy. Yeah. Okay. So very different actually to some of those other. Yeah. I don't think I, I wouldn't, I've done the Maya Briggs before and I don't know, I find that that's just a questionnaire based and it could change exactly like the love languages. Yeah. As you go on in your life, yep. obviously your beliefs and like beliefs and values are going to change. And so therefore those, those personality Tests change, yeah, too. and I sometimes whereas feel this like, won't change because we can't change it because it's the date of birth. It's That's the this, right, it's the yeah. that, yeah. Because I sometimes find that when I do do those those quizzes yeah. or those tests, I I sort of know the answer I want. So when we mm. did the Sex in the City quiz in honor of um, and just like that being released, which I know yes. you've got no idea what I'm talking about because no, you no, wouldn't no, have watched I do, it. I haven't watched it, but <laughs> I did. I did know it was coming. Yeah, out. but I wanted to be a Samantha. I I got Samantha. You. Who doesn't want to be Samantha? You were Samantha mm, too. See, I love, I love Carrie. You want to be Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, different to that because it's, it's in the stars. It's when we're born. We can't change it. Yeah. No. It's a bit of a wild system. So there's this guy called Alan Krakauer. I think that's how you say it. But he basically channeled this system. Mm -hmm. So he went into the wilderness for eight days and channeled this system. He changed his name. Um, following to uh, Al Rahu, I think. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, yes, it's based on astrology. It's based on some, um, like physics. There's, there's a lot to it and it does sound pretty wild when you say that out loud, but I guess it's just, you know, there's lots of information out there as to whether it is useful and it's been around for nearly, I think, about 30 years. And I just think that there's, from the research that I've done and speaking to other people, the powerful shifts that they have felt and I have felt in my life by understanding myself on a deeper level has been really powerful. And that's why I find that, yeah, living with my human design in mind has... Um, yeah, really played a pivotal part in my last five years, I would say. That's awesome. Hmm. So tell us more. What are the different types? Okay, so basically you you pop your details into um, systems um, on the internet and we can pop that in the show notes. Um, but basically that creates a body chart. So it kind of, it looks like the chakras. There's like, you'll come up with like a um, all different centres uh, that kind of, it looks like a body, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have, there's parts that are coloured in and then parts that aren't coloured in. So you have defined parts and then undefined parts. And these centres um, usually correspond to your type. Okay. So there are five types mm -hmm. in human design. And um, I'm going to go through go through them, but basically the type is the most important piece of the puzzle. And um, it it brings your human design together to kind of tell you or show you how you can use your energy in the most aligned way. So I'm going to go through the five types today and then we'll share what we both are because we've done ours. So um, generators is the first type and ge there's mostly generators in the world as well. I can't remember the exact um, percentage, but generators are the natural doers. They are creative powerhouses. And they're gifted with energy to do if they are lit up and they find joy in what they're doing. So if they are really like loving, you know, a creative project that they're working on, they will be able to go, go, go yeah. and lift others up with their energy as well to kind of keep producing. So they're really kind of cool to be around because they have this access to ongoing energy yes. if they're lit up. Um, and the the key thing is if they're lit up, they're lit up if they're feeling satisfied by what they're doing. Um, 
So we really need generators around mm. us because they kind of get us going. Mm. They're like the, the bees. They're like a power source. Yeah, almost yeah, as well. absolutely. I love that it's around energetics. Now that you're talking about it, when you were sort of yeah. describing it, I didn't really get it, but yeah. now I sort of get that. Yeah. And then there's other layers to yeah. it as well. But like the key piece with the types is about energy. Yep. Um, so we want generators in our life. We need generators. And as I said, we are, most of the world are generators. Um, the next type is a manifesting generator. So they have some qualities like a generator, but also some qualities like a manifester who I'll talk about after. But many gens are really multi-passionate and can be really speedy. They, they can get so much done in a really short space of time and I like, so I kind of liken it to, and I'm guessing that yours might be like this because Steph is a man gen. So on your computer and you have like heaps of tabs open, <laughs> like so many tabs, that is what... Guilty. A manifesting generator then is like. I can't like. find the tab I need because I'm trying to speed so quickly well, to get and it. And that can lead to a bit of frustration. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you are doers and you are really quick. You can be really quick and powerful in how you bring things to life when you're energized and lit up by what you're doing. But you can easily lose that passion mm -hmm. as well. So yep. if you, yeah, and that's why you kind of need this. Um, you need to be able to follow your urges and instincts. And that's why you might find that um, as a manager, they may have many different careers over the course of their lifetime or many different um, hobbies and yep. things like that, because you'll kind of find one thing and want to like do that, try that out. And then like, yeah, so many different things will um, be done by a manager. Um, and they're really amazing to be around you guys are. So you have a really buzzing kind of en engaging energy that really like uplifts um, others when they're around you. Um, Mangens can feel uncomfortable when they're limited to one path. So mm. if they are just like stuck in the daily grind and they're not feeling lit up by what they're doing, then they can feel that doesn't feel good for them. Um, but it's really natural for a mangen to try on many different things and they will really thrive when they reinvent themselves and their career and over the course of their lives. So, yeah, super cool you are. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is a... Um, oh, how many, sorry, how many yeah. man gens are there? Um, you, I think, again, are more common. Yep. Yeah. So it kind of goes in order. The ones I'm going to talk about are the order. So generators are the most common and then manifesting Mangent, generators. Yeah. And then the next one is a projector. So projectors are um, natural guides, leaders and teachers. So they're really, really sensitive to people. So they mm. can kind of, when, you, when you're with a projector, you can feel really seen by them. So they're really good at reading people mm -hmm. and understanding people on a different level. So that is their gift. Um, they're not meant to be consistent doers. So they don't like, like generators and manifesting generators, projectors don't have access to ongoing energy. So they're not ones that can work consistently, like say for a nine to five job and go, go, go. Mm. They work really well when they're able to rest yep. and, um, should really listen to their energy if they're feeling like they need to, to rest. Because they, when they're on, um, they give a lot. They can give a lot, but then they need time to kind of recharge. recharge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, gifted at seeing people really deeply. They're awesome at um, systems and processes. So they can see what is not working and are really great at coming up with ideas on how to fi fix things. So you really want projectors somewhere in your life yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we, they bring about that new perspective. Um, and for others that who are not projectors, we feel really good around them because we feel deeply recognised and seen by them. Mm. So that's their really that powerful gift. And they're actually really amazing at asking um, questions. So that's projectors. Next one is manifestors. Mm -hmm. So a manifester um, 
is a um, initiator or um, an innovator. They can can come up with um, new ideas pretty easily, and they have um, they kind of can get shit done by themselves. So the other types kind of need others to kind of come in and help them mm-hmm. to facilitate things, whereas mm-hmm. a manifester can kind of pave their own path in a way and typically they're here to go first so they take the first step they're not the great at finishing things they're not like they will need people to come in and help um at some point but they can get it started without the vision they hold yeah the vision yeah vision holders yeah absolutely um they they thrive with having freedom and autonomy um and they don't do well if they're like controlled so mm-hmm. they're not really here to be told what to do or guided in any way. Um, and they too, similar to projectors in a way, they have um, they don't have access to ongoing energy. So they'll have creative urges or bursts where they'll like produce heaps of stuff and then they'll need to retreat and go into a rest cycle. Mm. So, yeah, it's really important for manifestors to understand their own um, cycle and when they're in that creative burst, but then they need to give time to um, reflect, recharge, and kind of gather that energy again yeah. for the next burst. Yeah. Hmm, so well. It is. Um, and then our final one is reflectors. So I think there's maybe only like a couple of percent of reflectors in the world. Um, so we find them and we keep them. Yeah, they're pretty magical, I reckon. <laughs> it might be actually nice for me to get – I might next time just get some um, – like we did. Who do we do that about? Where you just the had Geminis? Up. Yeah, you just had the people. Like yeah. the yeah. Because as you're going people. through this, I'm thinking of of different people in my life. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking, wonder what they are, or, mm. you know, yeah. or I think they might be these. Mm. I know I've done that before, and then I'm like completely blown away. I'm like, oh no, they're not that at all. <laughs> but sorry, the last one was reflectors. So um, reflectors are really gifted um, connectors and facilitators. They are really wise. Mm. So they're those like kind of wise old owls mm. who see us, and they're yeah really objective. So they can intuit how things are not working and see ways to improve them. Um, And they're really, really sensitive to other people's energy. So um, they basically, so in in the body chart where the other types have defined centres where it's coloured in, reflectors are all open. So their whole body chart is open. Ah. So they receive a lot of energy and information from others. So they've got to be really protective of their own energy because they can take on other people's projections really easily. Um, So, yeah, their success is really to explore life and be very open to trying new things and, yeah, feeling things. But, um, yeah, they really need to express in many different ways. Mm. And that's all we've got time for, folks. <laughs> that's it. That's all right. Well, you do up. need to go, but do we I do. I've got so many questions. So now, um, so we've talked about type. So the next kind of important piece to the human design puzzle is what's called a strategy. Okay. Mm. So our strategy basically reveals how to create the most aligned opportunities mm-hmm. in our lives. So in relationships, career. <clears throat> excuse me, life and beyond. So strategy is a really powerful tool to eliminate resistance and create more flow in our lives. Mm. Mm. Who doesn't like a good strategy, hey? We all love strategy, especially projectors. <laughs> so our type informs our, instra- uh, our strategy and there are a few different types. So depending on your type, depends on your strategy. Have I explained that very well? Not too sure, but let's go. So if you are a generator and a manifesting generator, your strategy is to wait to respond. So this is important for you, Steph, being a manifesting generator. So because you, um, those two types are naturally magnetic, you'll have opportunities that are pulled towards you, right? Mm -hmm. And you need things in your life to show up in order for you to respond to them. Yes. And then continue on that like energetic 
path. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So basically you like get lit up in your gut usually and then rather than chasing and like creating, you know, things around you, you need to really wait for something to be provided to you. Like so it could be a podcast that you listen to. It could be a conversation that you've had with someone. It could be a book that you've read that Mm. you will then respond Mm. to that. Okay. And then go on your journey of like using your energy yep, gotcha. to do something. Okay. Yeah. So is it almost like if I'm a lawnmower? Mm. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> interested to see where this is going to go. Tell me. Please. This is what I picture in my mind. Yeah. And it's almost like um, someone pulling that cord, you know, the old school cords. Most of them still have that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I've not mown the lawn. No, you haven't. I don't think, have ever, you? I don't think I've ever mown the lawn. I've watched people mow the lawn. <laughs> but I've not done it. That's the acts of service that I like. That's right. Mow the lawn. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Please, thank you. I acknowledge you. Um, see you. <laughs> so like you pull the, so the cord could be the other, like the thing that, the book that I read yes. and then I'm off. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's good. I see what you're saying. I see the, Like it's the ignition almost. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You need to be, be given something. Mm. in order to then respond to that stimuli, mm-hmm. whatever that may yep, be. Yep, yep, And then once you, if you, that lights you up and you feel like, yeah, that like really like yes. makes me feel good, you yeah. get your energy going, and then you'll go on to use your energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and get that really kind of powerful response, speedy response. Yeah, probably not the best analogy, the lawnmower, but yeah, I, okay. I think, no, I don't mind it. Yeah. I don't mind it at all, actually. Hmm. So, yeah, you need to, like, you're meant to be really open. In, okay. uh, open up your awareness and see what sees, see what shows up in your world mm. rather than initiating. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. You're here to respond. Here to respond. Mm. Okay. What about yeah. yourself? So as a generator? So I'm a manifester. Sorry, manifester. But let me just keep moving through the, oh, we didn't, I did get up before the percentages too. Oh, cool. We will talk about that after. Um, but you know how I was kind of going through the... <laughs> We're talking about projectors next. Well, I will let you know when you talk when I talk about me. Please do. <laughs> okay. So, because I thought you were a generator. I'm not a generator. No. <laughs> I don't. How can you work I, that out about how me? Much yeah, I, I'm, I can do sometimes, but then I've got to rest. How much I listen? I'm such well, a bad listener. Well, you're learning. I'm learning. You're learning. <laughs> I still love you. Please just tell me though when we're talking about <clears> you. <throat> You. I'll tell you. I'll tell you when I talk about myself. Okay. Not that I love talking about myself, but I will tell you. So um, for projectors, they their strategy is to wait to be invited. So what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Hmm. Who's inviting them? Other types. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm, other people mm. or things. So rather than, again, similar to um, they don't like – Manifest, manifesting generators and generators, you don't, projectors don't want to initiate or chase after different opportunities. Uh-huh. They are really designed to be invited okay. and then recognised um, by others before committing their energy yeah. out into the world um, because they're really good at offering guidance. Um, but that guidance has to be ready to be received too. Mm. Otherwise, it can just feel really off for yep. the other type if a projector is giving giving something that hasn't really been invited in yeah. or asked for. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that so makes it's sense. really, it's interesting. <clears throat> so their guidance is like super, super precious, um, but they have to be ready for someone to hear it. So the invitation lets them know like when they can offer their amazing, deep, astounding kind of brilliant guidance that they have access to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, they've really got to – If it, not every invitation is correct either. So what's important is that they feel really deeply recognised in that moment and seen for the work that they do. Mm. So it's so like, – I just think this is so fascinating in a work sense for me, having a business and knowing when I've got projectors – um, who work alongside me to really kind of speak to their greatness 
and like mm. allow them to be seen, but invite them in yeah. to get their thoughts and ideas and because they're really great with systems and processes and things like that. So invite them in. What, you know, might be a question like, what do you think about this or whatever? So that's the invitation. And then that allows them to be recognised and seen and give their yes. perspective. So is this something that you sort of put on your application form? Like, okay, mm-hmm. I need to know your qualifications. I need to know your time of birth. Of birth. And your well, location. I've started to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, <laughs> look, I don't pressure anybody to give me that information, but if people are open to it, it's actually like... Yeah. It's amazing for teams, like astounding, because you just work out how each each of you work within a team. Mm. And, and I think I think anything like this that gives you a greater understanding of yourself mm. and how and why you respond, and maybe it's not just about self, but also going through the other profiles and going, okay, mm. everyone's got different things that really you know set them on fire, or that. You know, not everyone is go, 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 go. No, not everyone has the access to energy like you do or generators like manifesting generators or generators do. Yeah. So having just even that alone, just going that, oh, like projectors and manifestors need rest. Yeah. More so than you guys. Yeah. Because that is then going to allow the generators and manifesting generators to go like, oh, like I can't be pissed off at that person. Because they actually just need a break right now. Yeah, they're in their rest cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's self-awareness yeah. for yourself and others. Cohesion, connection. Mm. I don't mm. know. It's just like, yeah, it's quite cool. Mm. Mm. So so that's projectors. Now we're going to go on to manifestors, which you. is me. Yeah. yeah. So um, we are the only type that can initiate or a design to, to do initiate, not can, but a design to. So we're not meant to wait for anything mm. um, from the outside world to spur us on. We're basically meant to get a creative hit or an urge and then follow that urge. And often we might get that urge during a rest cycle. So we get these like pangs of creativity or ideas or inspiration and then we're meant to follow that in the moment and kind of move forward and then invite, you know, projectors in or, um, yeah, yeah, kind of then lean on the other types to help continue, I guess, that energy Mm. because then after a while that manifesto will need to go into a rest cycle. Yeah, so you go here, generator. Yeah, he's your little baby. Yeah. You can go on and yeah. continue that. Yeah. Um, the other thing that for a manifesto that's really important for them to do is to inform others before they act. Um, we can get others, we can move quickly. Um, and we can kind of get others offside if we're not letting them know if they're going to be impacted by our decision because mm. we can make decisions by ourselves. Everyone can make decisions by themselves, but we can act on something on our own. And if we, but if we don't inform, others can get put off a little bit. We've got to keep people in the loop. Um, And that's more of a piece of uh, creating flow and less resistance to what we're about to initiate. Yes. So that's a really, really important part of a manifestor's strategy. Um, And then finally, for reflectors. So reflectors carry that perspective and wisdom and to ensure that that wisdom is like highly valued it's best for them to be initiated and invited Mm -hmm. to share their gifts first Mm -hmm. um so yeah like projectors they need to be invited to be truly seen um by others um who recognize and understand how powerful their perspective is so they're the they're the wise old owls so um yeah, they need they need to really feel like it's the right opportunity for them to in the right space as well. So space is really important for them to feel like they can move forward um, in a really aligned way. And so then for the man gens, they're sort of <laughs> a, a bit of both. Is that correct? So they're a bit of the generating bit of the, yeah. in terms of their strategy? No, not for strategy. Strategy is just purely wait to respond, 
like yeah, okay, gotcha. a generator. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Their manifesting part, so they've got the energy of the um, of the generator, and the manifesting part is that you will get an urge. You like will get urges to go, but you get a gut response. Um, but then you still you you'll get that urge once you've waited. Mm. Like yep. to a response, you'll get that urge in a response. Whereas a manifester will just get a creative urge or hit, like spontaneously without an invitation or like an, an initiation. Yep, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So that's the difference between, but still, there's still some crossover. Hmm. Fascinating. So fascinating. So we've talked about the type and the strategy um, mm. within the human design chart. This week, in next week's episode, I would love it if you could give me more and maybe we could talk about the authority. Absolutely. Um, I've also seen a few other things mentioned in the chart properties around the the not-self theme, around profiles, definition, uh, incarnation cross. None of those things mean much to me now, but really hope that we could break down maybe some of them um, in next week's episode. But before we get to that, you mentioned something about the different percentages and, and, you know, how rare or common, for for want of a better word, some of these profiles are. Can you break those percentages down for us now? It's just so very, very, very interesting. So so out of the types, reflectors are 1% of the population. Mm-hmm. So really rare energy types. Then we've got manifestors who are nine percent of the population. You yeah, pretty rare. Pretty rare. Um, <laughs> pretty special. No, pretty I'm joking. Special. I'm no, you too. Projectors are twenty two percent of the population. Generators thirty one percent of the population. And man gens thirty seven percent. Common as mud. But you're a hybrid of the new age. <laughs> so there's there so before go. there wasn't the two. So then yeah, oh, yeah, we are a hybrid of the new age. You are. So there you go. You're very special. Very good. Okay. Everyone's special. Everyone's though, guys. special, and everyone's got their unique uniqueness. Uniqueness. Yes. And remember, take what resonates, leave the rest. Mm. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Thanks for listening. Oh, thanks for sharing. My pleasure. Love it. I want it. to hear more. I want more. I want more now. I can't wait to give me more. Research more yeah. for you and share. Be great. Maybe one of the things we could read you, we could do, like maybe people might like me to read you. <laughs> I don't know if people, people need to, need to hear that no, much. No, you're at a deeper level. <laughs> oh, very good. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I've loved sharing with you. Please let us know if you've liked what we've chatted about today. And if you want to hear more, give us um, some feedback and um, share us. Yeah, please leave a review. Review, Send it yeah. to a friend. We love reviews. Subscribe. We love reviews. Yeah, we love hearing from you. And also just as um, a little shout out too, we do have our Facebook group as well that we have um, put together. So um, it won't be the same as what you see on our Instagram. It's a bit different we'll be sharing jumping in there a little bit having yep. some chats and some connecting. behind the scenes yeah extra content so that's the selfish podcast with chloe and steph mm-hmm. um, so and then fun. we're also on instagram at the dot selfish podcast beautiful thanks beautiful people catch you next week thank you all so much for listening we really do appreciate your support Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a rating and a review. And if you like this show, please share it with a friend and tell them to have a listen. Just send them the link to that Spotify or Apple or wherever you get your podcast. You can also connect with us on Instagram at the.selfishpodcast. Um, you can always slide into our DMs as well and let us know if you have got a different type of treatment that you'd like us to explore or if you've got any specific questions. Anyway, thank you again and we'll see you next week.